Okay, I've got straight up uh, at 10 o'clock Hawaii time, 12 o'clock uh, Pacific time. Uh, if you do have any stocks you want us to be taking a look at, you, you basically want to put them into the uh, chat. Um, and we'll do that prior to the end as long as we don't have too many. So let's go ahead. The recording is started and away we go. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Dennis Wilborn. I want to welcome you to On the Radar, the live market update I do normally on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. This week was a little bit um, uh, different in that uh, Monday, of course, was a holiday, Martin Luther King's birthday. And then um, uh, Wednesday was the inauguration. So I, in respect of the inauguration, I, I basically did not do a uh, presentation that day um, or yesterday. And so we're back regular business today. And what do we do during these sessions? One, we want to take a really quick look at what's going on with the indexes. And today, so far, the indexes are mixed. Uh, uh, NASDAQ up a lot. Uh, Russell's down a little bit. S&P kind of is just holding its own. We'll talk specifically about that going forward. Uh, and then um, I want to pose a question to you for our, our trading tip is, uh, is do you, are you trading strategies or are you trading a system? There's quite a different. Typically, folks who get hooked into trading a strategy, like trading options, that's a strategy. Uh, trading stocks, that's a strategy. However, if you don't have your strategy built on top of a strong foundation of what? Of the basically uh, a, a system, that is, you know, that basically will generate somewhere between 65 to 75 percent a win-loss ratio and, uh, uh, you know, provides more winners than losers and allows you to stay in your winners long enough to where basically what you gain is much greater than what you, you know, lose when you hit your stop losses, then uh, that is, um, uh, then you're setting yourself up for, problems and trouble going forward because uh, uh, strategies based on no systems will lead to huge losses because you haven't accounted for it. So again, if you're interested in a system, you can check us out at Active Trend Trading. We run a very good system uh, that is basically both tested and proven over the years. 75% uh, win-loss ratio. Last year, we did a, right at 70% for our trading that was trading both stocks and options. And I don't stay in the market all the time because I have other things to do. I am not a day trader. I am a swing trader. There is a huge difference. And so, hey, Paula, how you doing? Nice to see you uh, joining us. Um, so let's go ahead and look at what's going on with the, the, uh, the indexes. So I want to basically take a look at the spiders first. There we go. What is the spider showing us? And I basically I've drawn in this little parallel channel as it moves on up. The S&P is up slightly for today. Uh, we've had a really good, nice bounce. Here's where Friday, it ended up Friday. Monday, or Tuesday here. Wednesday, a nice rebound. And now, but it's back up but towards the top of the channel. That normally is an indication that that we could be in line in the very near future for at least a pullback into the moving averages. One of the other things I want to take a look at is what moving average, in other words, what levels is price action respecting? And as you can see, price action is respecting either the 20. And when I say respecting, what I'm talking about is price action pulls back and it either stops or goes slightly below and then pops back up. Armed with that information, then we can then start uh, evaluating how to place trades where we will basically buy at wholesale so we can sell at retail, but we want to buy at wholesale when it's testing out that area of value. So the 20-day moving average is one. The 34-day moving average is another area where the S&P respects. Do we have a trade right now in the upside direction? The answer to that is not really, uh, because we're too far extended away from the moving averages. 
we want to see some kind of a pullback into the moving averages. Let it settle there. And that's where we would want to be a, a buyer of either buying S the S&P or it works the same way with the other indexes, buying the S&P right in that area of value. That's my my uh, what I, I like to call my wholesale level <laughs> to be able to uh, um, you know buy wholesale, sell retail. So nothing to do on S and P. It is up slightly for the day. Uh, it's up about a buck. And so let's get over to the Qs. Now one of the things we're also waiting for the Qs represents the Nasdaq. It is the leverage ETF or not the leverage the non leverage ETF for the Nasdaq. What are we looking at for, uh, as you can see, it has busted out the top of its, um, it has busted out the top of its channel. That normally is a sign that we are getting a little bit overheated and overextended. There was also a really good article in Investor Business Daily yesterday that talks specifically about when the NASDAQ gets extended anywhere from 6 to 8% away from the 50-day moving average, that's when it tends to trigger a deeper pullback. Now, nothing here is saying, hey, let's get short NASDAQ. We have no reversal signals on a daily, a weekly uh, chart. However, it is extended. I would anticipate, and one of the things that I also like to take a look at, and I'll just throw this up here as a, and that's why I use the Fibonacci's, Typically, price action will move in one, two, three, you know, like in this case, one, two, three, four, five days up, one, two, three days up, and now it's gone up one, two, three days up. Oftentimes, it will have a rhythm to it where if it's you know, on this one of these tracks where it's running up three days or up five days, then you can anticipate a potential pullback. Um, uh, and so what that also tells us is that if I'm at the fourth day of a run up, it's a time when I definitely don't want to necessarily be buying because I'm extended. Now, one of the things I like to do with my Fibonacci is I like to say, okay, if I'm going to, uh, it's another way to figure out how far I am or, or how close I am to hitting the potential stops on the move up. And is it remaining maintaining symmetry? So I take this move up here from this 305 level, about there, up to this swing high here, back to the swing low. Now the 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 dark line right there means I've it has reached and and hit the symmetry of this move up from 305 up to yeah 320 319. We've exceeded that. On this next move up, the next target where we could potentially see some turnaround is up here at the 127, uh, 127 Fibonacci extension. That's a natural place where we'd expect, okay, that's where prices could run into issues and start to drop back down. Can it blow on through that? Certainly can. But those are key points of hidden resistance where prices may stop and then if they show weakness or show stalling in the, in the particular candlesticks, we'll look for it to fall back down. Good stuff. And so at this point, again, no specific trades on the NASDAQ. And the, oh, the other thing I wanted to, to indicate is that at per IBD, we are currently about, and they use the, the simple moving average. I use the, uh, 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 the exponential moving average. It shows that I'm about 6.37% above the 50-day um, uh, moving average, which is the golden line right there. And so, yeah, it's ripe for a pullback. We just don't see it yet. It hasn't happened yet. So then let's jump on down to the IWM, which is the Russell, uh, the, the uh, uh, ETF for the Russell. And uh, one of the things that's very interesting, oftentimes the Russell will the Russell will lead the market both either up or down. That's why we want to be paying attention to it. It, it encompasses more stocks than either the uh, uh, 
the S&P and or the uh, uh, the S&P and or the uh, Nasdaq. And so it gives a little broader indication of another segment of the economy. And if it starts to weaken and look for a, you know, we could look for a deeper pullback or, or it will oftentimes lead the market if it goes into a correction. So just keep that in mind. Anything to do right now? Not really. If price action stays where it is, we will have a spinning top followed by a bearish. And this is called a bearish engulfing pattern, which is a, uh, a reversal signal to the downside. Uh, and so we can anticipate that moving down, you know, a little bit. Where might it go also? Again, I look back to where it's gone before. It's gone down to the 20-day. On the run-up from October of last year, it actually respected the heck out of the eight-day moving average. So we want to be paying attention to that. If I get a close below the eight, I'll look for support at the 20. If I get a close below the 20, I'll look for support at the 34. And all good stuff. Do I want to be ready to take a trade to the downside on uh, IWM? I would say if I were going to do any of the indexes, I would look to trade IWM to the downside first. But I, I, I need some confirmation on this bearish engulfing pattern. And I am not going to trade it if it's right, you know, square dab up against the eight-day moving average because that's a level of support. Why take a bearish trade if I'm at a level of support. Um, let's see. Hey, stock uh, market beast. I'm using OBS. Uh, if I, I think that's what you're what you're asking. Yeah, I use OBS to basically set it up where I can do uh, uh, the Instagram feed like that. Uh, great question. If you want to uh, DM me and and uh, or uh, send me a note, you can do that also. <laughs> that's cool. And let's see any other. So again, uh, guys, if you have a stock you want me to take a look at prior to the end, we're co coming up to the end here in about three minutes. Uh, just let me know. Here's one of the things that uh, one of my, I would call it my technical tips. One of the things that um, I wish they would have, you know, I got started trading back in 19, 1991, 92 timeframe. So that's, that's a while. That's a while ago. That's about 30 years ago. Um, Back when I had to download my data for my chart charts, uh, and I could only afford to download like data for like you know fifty different symbols, and how things have definitely changed, it's insane. But uh, uh, and it's so much simpler now. But the one thing that I really the advent of uh, ETFs for the indexes. Uh, you know, back about it's that's been going on for about 15, 20 years now that they've had those. I wish I would have had that when I was learning how to start trading, learning how to trade stocks and do that kind of stuff. Why is that? Is because one, they're so much simpler to trade than stocks. I don't have to waste all my time looking for a good stock to trade. They ha offer, if you want to be an option trader, they offer options to be able to trade. And they offer this other thing called leveraged ETFs, leveraged index ETFs. So that if you don't want to trade options, you can basically trade the leveraged ETFs. And they, they're the, I, I like the ones that are three times leverage, both to the upside and the downside. And so what that means is that they are set up where they will move three times the daily move of the entity. So in other words, now that's, uh, um, so in the, in the case of IWM, I want to be looking over at two different areas, TNA. I just love, you know, TNA. That's the leverage ETF on this. As you can see, uh, it's dropped about a buck 40, but it's only $84, you know, for the, for the price. And then the inverse of this, and this is the other thing that I really like about, you know, looking at this, the inverses allows me to, you know, when the, you know, a lot of people don't know how to short or they don't want to trade the, uh, 
the individual uh, uh, options, you know, the put options and this type of stuff to the downside. So what the leverage, the inverse leverage ETF allows you to do is when the Russell is falling from the sky, I can actually run around and grab the uh, TZA and actually trade it to the upside. So it's going, you know, our minds, our mindset is set to where, ah, oh, okay, as long as it's going up and to the left, that's up and to the right, that's good. And, and to give you some idea of what kind of a move it's normally can make, let me go back to this last little move from here to here. Okay, this move here, it was a, it was a ah, five day move and it moved 16% in five days. Absolutely excellent. If I roll it back a little bit, as you can see last year, this move at the beginning of 2020 where the market kind of fell into a swoon, uh, this move here, oh, you don't want to know how much it was. It was, it was a little bit over 200%. So it gives some additional opportunities. If you want to know more about that, hey, drop me a note. Uh, again, if you're joining us on um, YouTube, so that's basically all I have right now. Uh, do I, do I ha have a potential? Yeah, I want to show you one last thing. XOP, uh, as you are very much aware, the Biden administration is going to come right out of the box and they're going to cancel the, uh, the pipeline deal with... Uh, uh, and so I'm not quite sure what it's going to do to oil exploration or energy exploration, but you know, definitely they have another agenda that is different than what President Trump had. Um, and so with the Keystone, Key, uh, Stone, is it Keystone Pipeline, uh, with that canceled, oil exploration may, in fact, take a nosedive. It might. Same as oil. But I can trade XOP, which is a leverage, I mean, which is a non-leverage ETF, and look for you know, a sell-off on this to drop back down and fall, you know, potentially like a rock. On that, I can also flip it out and I can trade the leveraged ETFs. I can either trade Gush, which is my three-time leverage, to the upside. And you can see it, you know, this little move from here to here. I can get for this last move, it went up. You know, that's about a 200% move in a very short period of time. Or I can trade the flip side of that. I can trade what they call drip. Where they come up with these names, I don't know. Uh, but again, it opens up some new opportunities and also can hopefully make it more efficient for how you use your time. Because uh, at, at Active Trend Trading, our model, my model is basically I want to be, basically provide a clear and simple trading system that allows busy people to basically... Uh, maximize their profits while minimizing their risk, but doing it, uh, and for a lot of our, our folks who trade with us, they basically spend an hour on Sunday to set up their trades, and then they fire and forget and let the trades come for them. You know, what a great way to be patient and also uh, uh, in line with the market. So, hey, that's all I've got. Hey, do you, anybody have a stock that they want me to take a look at? La, 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 la. If you can, if you do, just type it into the uh, join once. Going twice. If you found today's session really, uh, really helpful, let me know about that. Drop me a note. And also, if you're watching this on YouTube uh, and you're not a subscriber on YouTube, hey, hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit the uh, bell so you'll be notified of new content. And now that uh, we're back in gear, expect the on the radars to be to hit you every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, unless there's a holiday, at 12 noon Pacific. So with no further ado, I'll basically say aloha. God bless everybody. Have a great rest of your day. See ya.